so that being said, let's, let's dive into some of the symptoms associated with copper deficiency. And one of them, so we just talked about bone mineralization, okay, osteoporosis, right, brittle bones. And so, again, if you've gone to the doctor, and we've talked about bone scans in the past. Those of you who remember, I did a very special show on the myth of the bone scan. So the, way, the best way to detect whether or not you have brittle bones is, in my opinion, is not really through a bone scan. Because a bone scan, remember, um, a bone scan detects... X-ray absorption of your bone. And that's really about it. It doesn't, it, it's not really telling you the quality of your bone. It's just telling you how well it's absorbing x-ray compared, ladies, compared to a 35-year-old female. So it's not the greatest way to detect osteoporosis. There are several different things that can help you identify the quality of the bone. And, and one of them is to do a nutritional evaluation. So asking your doctor to do a complete nutritional workup where you're not just looking at necessarily even copper, but you're looking at the other minerals, the magnesium, the chromium, the selenium, uh, the calcium, your vitamin D status. Um, so very important to do a nutritional workup, nutritional lab workup to see if you have adequate nutrients. Um, because if you don't, that's going to directly impact and reflect in your bone. Now, something else that you can have done if you're really concerned is just doing an x-ray. And so there are x-rays can be done of the spine and what it can sometimes show is it can sometimes show reduced um, reduced bone density. What doctors will look at sometimes on an x-ray is called the trabecular pattern. And if your trabecular pattern looks like there's bone loss, it can be a, a, a better detection for quality of bone. And then there's one more thing that you can do for, for looking at this. Again, and, 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 and that is there's some urine testing that can measure how fast your bone is building versus how fast it's breaking down. And those tests, one of them is called osteocalcin. Um, so if you've ever heard of osteocalcin before. And another one is called uh, pyridinium crosslinks. Um, I can spell that for you because that's a mouthful, pyridinium. So these tests will kind of, they're urine tests that can kind of help you, uh, help you, 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 your, your determination of how fast your bone is building versus how fast it's breaking down. Now, if you're, if you're suspecting that you do have brittle, brittleness in the bone, maybe you're prone to fracture, even with light falls and things of that nature, you can certainly, this goes back to nutritional lab workup and copper is going to play a role in that. And I'll get to that. So stay with me. We're going to talk about lab testing and we're going to talk about how to look for copper deficiency within that regard. Cognitive dysfunction, is, or dysfunction rather, is another symptom of copper deficiency. Remember I said earlier, you need copper to produce dopamine, which is a primary neurotransmitter or chemical that your nerves use to communicate with each other, as is adrenaline. So cognitive decline or cognitive dysfunction, dopamine is very important. Frequent infections. Remember I said earlier that people with low copper generally tend to have low neutrophils. The name for that medically is neutropenia. So having low levels of neutrophils it predisposes you. Your neutrophils are a specialized type of white blood cell and they act like the army. You've got five classes of different types of white blood cells. Neutrophils are the most abundant and they, they're kind of like the army. If you think of your immune system cells is, is, is you've got neutrophils, lymphocytes, uh, monocytes, basophils, eosinophils, the, the different classes of white blood cells. Think of those as the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines, but you know, what, what you think of the armed forces, but the neutropenia, again, this is your army. And so if this is low, you're going to be predisposed to picking up on infections. Poor, gallant, or poor balance and unsteady gait, and this can have to do here with this as well but it can also have to do with the fact that, um, that, that copper plays a role, aside from balance, it plays a role in neurological function. Remember I said earlier, it's necessary for myelin production. And so when we start to lose that myelin sheath, those nerves that give us position on, on, and balance, uh, if they're demyelinating, we're gonna, we're gonna become ataxic or lose our balance. Pale skin, I mentioned earlier because of the, the uh, 
the melanin pigment that copper is necessary to help produce for the skin. Easy bruising, this is, this is again because copper plays a role in collagen formation. Remember your blood vessels are made out of collagen, but co copper also plays a role, going back to what we said a minute ago, in clotting, in blood clotting. So easy bruising, both for those, both of those reasons. And then premature graying of the hair. One of the things that we'll sometimes see is something called a flag sign. So in a flag sign, what this is, is it's like um, almost like on the side of a person's head, you'll get a patch of hair that's shaped almost like a square or rectangle, like a flag, if you will, that that hair starts to turn white. That's a flag sign. And if you develop that, you could be copper deficient. This, this same sim symptom here, flag sign, can also be present in vitamin B5 deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency. So it's not just specific for copper, but because copper plays a role in pigmenting your hair, definitely can create this type of problem. Loss of muscle tone. Uh, copper is very, very important for tonicity of the muscle. Remember, dopamine drives many of the neurological pathways that allow your brain to communicate through your spinal cord to your muscle and create muscle tone. This is why uh, people with Parkinson's, as I said earlier, they develop tremors. Their, their muscles, their, their, their ability to control the muscles starts to become poor and over time those muscles start to weaken and that's what loss of muscle tone can contribute to. In children we see stunted growth. I mean why do we see that? Because copper plays a role again in, in, in neurological function, it plays a role in the skeletal formation. So if they don't have adequate copper they may not have enough to mineralize their bone and produce adequate levels of growth. High blood sugar and, and really specifically here um, where copper plays a big role with, with, it's less to do with glucose and more to do with fructose. Fructose is a type of sugar. Most people today get it in the standard American diet where they're loading up on high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup based drinks, corn syrup is in most um, confections and, and things of that nature. So the world today, and the, especially in industrialized countries like the US, they're fructose toxic, right? And in order to metabolize fructose, this is done in the liver and it requires copper. And so when you don't, and you're not capable of doing that, you can get that buildup of fructose in the liver. It can cause fatty liver, and that can also contribute to fluctuations in blood sugar. Um, we also have poor blood sugar from a clotting perspective. So copper is necessary to help form platelets, and platelets help clot the blood. So um, the, the the blood sugar itself, the elevation in blood sugar, remember it can interfere with the way that your platelets function, the way that your platelets work, but again, copper deficiency in and of itself can also create or contribute to low levels of platelets. And then chronic low white blood cell count, we mentioned that up here already under, uh, under immune function, under frequent infection, so again, neutropenia or total low white blood cell counts. So if your white blood cell counts are in the twos or threes, that could potentially be copper deficiency. If your neutrophils, every time you get your CBC back or low, that could also be copper deficiency. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.